Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. You can find us online over at facebook.com slash Houston Real Estate Radio and give us a like. We put out a lot of videos over there, a lot of information, let you know each week what we're going to have on the Sunday program. This week, we are focusing on our mayoral candidates. And, you know, it, it's really interesting. We The GHBA has interviewed, interviewed uh, all seven of the candidates, and the HAR has also interviewed all seven or kind of vetted all seven of the, the interviews and or in, of the candidates and you know it's really interesting to to watch this process take place and so you know I was kind of torn you know I have questions I want to ask but I also want to let them talk a little bit about what their plans are for the future and what they want to do so this segment I want to bring on Bill King he's got a lot of experience as being a past mayor um, down in Kima and so I want to bring him on and so welcome to the show Bill thanks for calling in today you bet. Thanks for having me. So I want you just to talk for a minute or two and just tell us, you know, what your plans are for the city, why you're running, and, and what you think the city needs. Well, you know, I think we live in one of the most amazing cities in the world. It's, it has this unique combination of a can-do spirit with this big, open, welcoming heart. And, uh, and as a result, we do really remarkable things in Houston, whether it's digging a ship channel 50 miles inland or putting a man on the moon or building the biggest medical center in the world. Um, but but I, I'm running for mayor because I'm growing increasingly alarmed that we have a city government that's not living up to the greatness of the city. And uh, we're not making the investment in the infrastructure that we need to, and you don't need to do anything other than drive on our streets a few blocks to know that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, increasingly, Houstonians don't feel safe in this city. Our police department only solved 8% of the burglaries last year. Unacceptable. Uh, And we've managed to get ourselves in quite a financial pickle down at city government, notwithstanding uh, we've been going through the biggest oil and gas boom, certainly in my lifetime, and city revenues have been soaring. So I think we need to change directions. We don't want to go down a a road that some of these other cities have gone down and where you start having financial difficulties and losing population. We want to we want to have a city that like the one we inherited from our uh, from our you know parents and grandparents. So let's talk about the traffic congestion. You know, I have a lot of that every day when I come to work. What are your plans to alleviate some of the traffic congestion? Yeah. So traffic is, of course, a, a big problem for any big. Uh, heavily populated urban area, and, and we're never going to eliminate traffic. And frankly, if you elim- <laughs> the way you eliminate traffic is having a recession, and we certainly don't want to do that. Uh, but there are things that we can do to manage and mitigate it. Uh, and there's a lot of tools in that toolbox. There is no silver bullet solution. People, you know, want to think, well, let's just go build a bunch of trains or something, and we'll solve it. No, um, it, it, it takes a, a, a multi-faceted approach. Certainly, good transit is part of the solution. Mm-hmm. Uh, in particular, I think, like our park and ride system, we have one of the most, the, one of the largest and most extensive park and ride systems in the country, and I think we could do a lot to expand that. I'm encouraged by um, Metro's uh, decision to refocus on the bus service and try to figure out how to make that uh, more user friendly and, and more accommodating for the drivers. But you know, the biggest thing the city could do. Is, is trying to make sure that we get the most out of the existing grid system. And this is not particularly sexy, and it's not very flashy, but it's that sort of basic blocking and tackling of making sure that the lights are timed, making sure the streets are in good repair, doing intersection improvements, grade separating railroad tracks, um, well, all you know, those sort of basic blocking and tackling that we just haven't been doing in recent years. Well, a lot of those things cost money, so how would you fund uh, fund those projects? Well, look, the city of Houston is taking in plenty of money. Uh, over the last five years, the property taxes have gone up by 25 uh, percent. The, um, the sales tax have gone up by 36 percent. Water and sewer rates have gone up by 47 percent. And our, our income from licensing and permits has gone up by 100 percent. Now, just last year, we collected $135 million more in property taxes than we collected the year before. This is not a question of having the money to do this. This is a question of how we're allocating so the how, revenue what that would we you, have. So what would you want to cut? Well, I'll give you a good example. The current budget was just adopted just last week where, you know, we're 
we're a hundred million dollars short on balancing the budget, and we're one hundred and fifty million dollars short next year already. We know. So, if you're in that situation, what would you do with headcount? Would you increase it or decrease it? I think most businesses would think I need to cut back on my personnel. We added 775 new employees in this budget cycle. And by the way, only 38 of those were new police officers. So you're going to reduce uh, some of the uh, employees in the city? I certainly certainly wouldn't be adding new employees. That's $70 million added to the budget this coming year for new employees. That's, you know... That is irresponsible given the situation we're in. But there's other things. For example, you know, um, we, we operate a crime lab at the city of Houston. It costs us about $20 million a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we pretty successfully demonstrated that running a crime lab is not one of the city of Houston's core competencies. <laughs> And, uh, and Harris County has a brand-new crime lab run by a medical doctor in the medical center, accredited by all the agencies that review those types of operations, dying to have our business. And instead of going over and cooperating with the county and working out a deal with them, we go off and set, a new lo- set up a new local government corporation to run a crime lab that has an executive director, a general counsel, a chief financial officer, a PR person. You know, why would we go do that as opposed to just saying, let's go over and do a deal with Harris County and cut our expenses? So what about, um, let's talk a little bit about the layout of the city, because you've talked about transportation and you've talked about, about budget issues. With the layout of the city, we know that we could we could if we could get more businesses in the north and kind of in the southeast area it would help with transportation issues it would help with growth in different areas of the city what what are your plans to help grow other areas of the city to try to redirect some of those traffic patterns yeah so i I don't think the city has a lot to do with how the how how, where people want to locate and 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 what part of town they want to be in those are mostly decisions that individuals make companies make based on market conditions and and the city doesn't have a lot of control over that there's one thing though that does bother me and that is that we do tend to pick winners and losers as far as neighborhoods go and so there are some areas that we invest in very heavily, and there's some areas that we don't invest in. And to some degree, that's going to affect, you know, people's interest in going into those areas. And I'll give you a good example. The, um, uh, you know, this uh, bus lanes that we're getting ready to build on Post Oak, uh, that involves $120 million of property tax money. That's now, there's some federal and state money. There's $120 million of local property tax money being spent on that project. Well, you know, the gallery is doing pretty well already. Um, how do we justify spending $120 million of property tax money to supposedly improve traffic congestion in the richest neighborhood in Houston while neighborhoods on the north and the southeast are going begging for the basic services, Mm -hmm. you know, decent streets, flooding, um, you know, uh, uh, police patrols. uh, You know, we have 9,000 abandoned houses in this city, abandoned structures, I should say, in this city that the city needs to tear down. We're turning down about 300 a year, and the city says that's just all they can afford to do. I could tear down all of those with 120 million dollars. Well, and it so sounds like some you of it would, has to do. Some of it has to do with the equity of how we spread the money around town. It sounds like you would hire more police officers. Is that right? I think we need to hire more police officers. I will say though that you know when you when you talk to the police department's management, they immediately say we need more money. That's the constant yeah. you know re, re, refrain that you hear every year from there. But here's my problem: if you go back 10 years ago. Um, you know, we had we were spending four hundred and fifty million dollars on the police department. In the last ten years we've doubled that budget to nine hundred million dollars. Yet we have three hundred fewer police officers today than we had ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Now that's a management problem. That's a management issue. And so before I start throwing a bunch more money at the police department, I really want to look at hard at how that money's being spent over there, how many officers are actually patrolling, right. uh, investigating crimes as opposed to sitting behind desks doing bureaucratic type jobs before what, we start throwing a bunch more money over there. What I know we're going to run out of time here in just a minute, but what about pensions? Because um, I would think some of that money is going to pensions. No, no question. That's a huge so, problem. The city is absolutely has an unsustainable pension system. It's got to be reformed. Uh, 
I'm personally not in favor of changing the deal for existing employees. I think in Texas, a deal's a deal. Maybe our officials made a bad deal for us, but our but these people gave us their service based on the promises that were made to them, and I don't think we can renege on those promises. But to continue to make these promises to new employees mm-hmm. is irresponsible. It will ultimately undermine the financial stability of not only the city, but of the pension plans themselves. This is a bad deal for taxpayers and employees, and it's got to be reformed. Can't we do, uh, you, we talked a minute ago about adding companies to other areas of town to, to, train, to change some of those traffic patterns. Aren't there some tax incentives that the city can give to um, large companies moving into Houston to get them to move to other parts of the city? Yeah, there's tax abatements, and there's some things you can do. I, I'm not a huge fan of those because um, it, it's it's you know it sounds good in theory, but when you actually look at how it works, we tend to give. It, it certainly appears that we frequently give tax break to politically advantaged groups, you know, sort of insiders that have friends and stuff. And you look at a lot of these projects, and it's really hard to figure out how they're really doing the city much good. Okay, last question for you. Flooding. You know, we just had a ton of flooding um, here in Houston. What, what, what is your plan to help fix the flooding issues? Well, first of all, we've got to completely scrap this Rebuild Houston program, uh, which has been such a disaster, uh, and go back to what we did for 200 years in this town, which is have bond elections in which we actually list the projects we're going to do, how much it's going to cost, and let the voters vote on it. And uh, we've now been, we're now five years into this so-called Rebuild Houston program, and is, does anybody think our streets are in any better condition? No. Does anybody think the drainage is any better? No. This obviously hadn't worked, and now, of course, the Supreme Court has said that, it, the, that the election was, you know, egregiously misleading is their language, and so we're going to have to completely rework that program, and I think we ought to go back to the way we did things for 200 years. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show. You bet. Thank good, you for having me. Good luck to you. I know you've got a you've got a ways to go. So good luck to you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for coming on the show. You're li- on. you're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. You just heard from uh, the mayoral candidate Bill King uh, about his ideas on what to do for our city. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. REA Media has an exciting new product available to companies and organizations who are teaching classes and want to offer those classes online. Introducing Easy Distance Learning. Easy Distance Learning is a video-based distance learning system that allows companies and organizations to leverage their existing classroom content into a broader reach and increased revenues. Did you know that the rate of growth of distance learning is 10 times that of classroom education? And 66% of chief academic officers think distance learning is critical to their long-term strategy. Right now, 33% of higher education students are taking at least one online class. Companies and organizations not offering a distance alternative to in-class instruction risk being left behind. Video-based distance learning has three basic components. Classroom capture, post-production, and content distribution. Easy Distance Learning is a comprehensive and modular system that covers all three components that can help your organization with what you are missing in offering a quality and convenient online learning experience. You choose the parts you need help with. Easy Distance Learning offers another revenue stream a broader reach of your existing content, and a professional presentation with a great learner experience. Contact us today for a free estimate and see how easy distance learning can take your company or organization to the next level.